Good morning. I'm pleased, to, uh, pleased and honored to be here to share my experience with you. I have no declaration. This is the outline of my talk. I would like to start with epidemiology and the role of imaging, then move on to various types of endometriosis. And at the end, I would like to talk some recent techniques used for endometriosis. Endometriosis is defined as the presence of endometrial tissue outside the uterus. Regarding the histogenesis, ectopic transplantation of endometrial tissue is most widely accepted. It is estimated to occur in 10 to 50 percent of women of reproductive age and is often associated with dysmenorrhea and infertility. Clinically, serum CA125 level is mostly elevated. Endometriosis affects all the pelvic organ and even abdomen and lung in some part. The most common site of involvement is ovaries. Ovarian endometriosis is called endometriotic cyst or endometrioma, or sometimes called chocolate cyst. The staging of endometriosis is established by laparoscopy and is based on the classification of revised American Fertility Society. This system is based on the evaluation of endometrial implant, the degree of Douglas subordination, and the variation of adhesion. Regarding the roles of imaging modalities, ultrasound is the most easily accessible and initial imaging modality to diagnose endometriotic cysts and endometriosis in other side. But the making differentiation of delmoid cysts, hemorrhagic cysts, and malignancies is not easy. And the detection of adhesion uh, at posterior uterus, such as uterozacular ligament or the posterior uterus region, is also difficult. MRI is a good modality to diagnose endometriotic cysts and exclude malignancies and other benign ovarian lesions. MRI can contribute to diagnose adhesion, but not so good as laparoscopy. The slide shows the basic MRI imaging protocol for evaluation of endometriosis. D1 weighted image with fast saturation is useful for differentiation from delmoises and the detection of small hemorrhagic implant. Several scan planes are required for evaluating adhesion or deep pelvic endometriosis. Recently, three-dimensional T2 or T1 weighted image is used for instead of um, additional brain of images. Let's move on to the MRI imaging findings of endometriotic cyst. This is a case of a typical endometriotic cyst. Typical R2 sign findings are the cystic mass with low signal, uh, low internal echoes sometimes accompany septations. MR imaging findings are cystic locules with high signal intensity on T1 weighted image and low signal T2 weighted image reflecting the blood product. An important and common MR feature of endometriotic cyst is shading on T2 weighted image. Shading is caused by the chronic bleeding with high concentration of iron and um, iron and protein within the cyst. Multiplicity of hyperintense cyst on T1 weighted image is another typical findings. Repeated bleeding results in the formation of new blood locule and make multiple cysts with high signal intensity on T1. Administration of contrast material does not provide additional information for evaluating endometriotic cyst. One of the differential diagnoses of endometriotic cyst is hemorrhagic corpse rutum cyst. In this case, left adnexal cyst shows high signal intensity on both T1 and T2 weighted image. 
Hemorrhagic cysts are usually unilocular in contrast to endometrioma and does not exhibit shading on the weighted image. We sometimes find low signal intensity lesion on D2 weighted image and high signal on T1 within the cyst. This is a chronic blood product after cyclic bleeding for years. In the influence of progesterone, such as during pregnancy or the progestin therapy, a decidual change of endometrium in the endometriotic cyst has occurred. In this image taken before pregnancy, small endometriotic cyst is found. During pregnancy, after 14 weeks of gestation, um, so decidual tissue is found as mural nodules. It looks like ovarian carcinoma, but high signal nodule with that of placenta is a characteristic finding of decidual change. Adhesion associated with endometriosis called to block tubal ovarian motility and prevent ovum to be picked up. This phenomenon leads to subfertility or infertility. Since evaluation of adhesion using ultrasound and MRI is not easy, the diagnosis is made by laparoscopy. Although adhesion is sometimes difficult to be picked up by MRI imaging, several indirect signs are known. Those are anterior retraction of the rectal wall, elevation of posterior vaginal fornix, posterior displacement of the ovary and uterus, located fluid correction and hydrozappings. Normally, bilateral ovaries are located beside the uterus. In patients of endometriosis, bilateral ovaries are retracted to the posterior uterus due to adhesion. The ovaries appear in this way are called kissing ovary. Implant of endometriosis is representing the small area of hemorrhage. These implants can be visualized on T1 with fast saturation. In this case, the strong adhesion is noticed at the posterior uterus. The hemorrhagic region is difficult to be picked up on T1 weighted image, but easy on T1 with fast saturation. A deeply infiltrating endometriosis is defined as an endometriotic lesion penetrating into retro peritoneal space or the wall or pelvic organ to the depth of more than 5 mm. It occurs 30 to 40 percent of endometriosis patients. Because surgery remains the best therapeutic option, the accurate assessment of the extent of the disease before operation is important. The histologic findings are fibromuscular hyperplasia and fibrous reaction that surrounds the foci of endometriosis. The most frequent site of deep pelvic region is torso uterinus and uterosacular ligament. Torso uterinus is anatomically defined as the original insertion of bilateral uterosacular ligament at the posterior surface of the uterine cervix. Since deep pelvic endometriosis is histologically characterized by fibromuscular hyperplasia, MR imaging findings shows low signal thickening and nodular appearance on T2-weighted image. Small hemorrhagic implant shows high signal spot on T1 with fast saturation. Since deeply infiltrating endometriosis is closely related with adhesion, the MR findings are very similar. Contrast enhancement MRI and diffusion weighted image are not so much useful for evaluating deep lesions. In normal uterus, uterosacular ligament is recognized as thin smooth line on axial or oblique axial D2 weighted image. 
In cases of endometriosis, the ligament shows low signal intensity on T2-weighted image and irregularly thicken at the attachment of the uterine cervix. Sometimes small nodules are found inside the ligament. The schematic drawing shows the typical MR imaging findings of Douglas obliteration. The characteristic findings are little flexed uterus, fibrous, fibrous strand between uterus and rectum, an elevated vaginal fornix, a fibrotic plaque on the serotonin surface of the uterus. Bladder is the most frequently involved organ in urinary tract. On MR imaging, high signal spot on the surface of the bladder wall is found on T1 weighted image. On T2 weighted image, the bladder wall thickening with irregular uh, heterogeneous signal intensity is found. These implants often confined to the serotonin surface but can infiltrate the muscle and appear as mural masses projecting into bladder lumen. Ureter is the second most uh, frequently involved organ in urinary tract. This patient had a bilateral endometrial tixis, although it is not shown on this slide. On coronal and sagittal T2-weighted image, enlarged renal pelvis and dilatation of the ureter is found. At the bottom of the dilated ureter, irregular hypointense region is found. On the actual image, that region is qualified as a part of an irregularistic neutral ligament with the attraction of rectal wall. <laughs> rectal sigmoid junction is the most commonly affected area of in, uh, intestinal endometriosis. The characteristic findings are a symmetrical thickening of anterior rectal wall called fan shaped. This finding is correspond to the thickening of muscular layer and uh, smooth muscle hyperplasia at histology. On double contrast volume enema shows irregular wall surface with narrowing. I will show a few cases of rare site of endometriosis. Thoracic endometriosis is uncommon and is usually diagnosed by clinically. Most of the imaging findings are pneumothorax, rux, humus rux, and lung nodules. This patient complained of a regularly repeated pneumothorax. At the operation, the small defect was found on the diaphragm and so to be the migrating path of the endometrial tissue from peritoneal cavity to pleural cavity. Endometriosis can occur in cutaneous tissue such as inguinal region or within surgical scars, usually after pre or uh, gynecological operation. This patient had a history of operation of endometriotic cyst. At MRI, inguinal region shows low signal intensity both on T1 and T2 weighted image due to fibrosis. Endometriotic cyst has the potential source of ovarian carcinoma and the risk of malignant transformation is about 2.5%. The cancer can occur in gonadal and exogonadal site and result in the wide histological range of tumors. The most frequent cancers are clear cell carcinoma and endometrial adenocarcinoma. Recently, chromosomal operation and P53 protein abnormalities are thought to be related with malignant transformation of endometriosis. Several clinical and imaging risk factors of malignant transformation are, are reported. Those are the ages over 40 years old, the enlarged cyst size, the lack of shading on T2 weighted image, and the emergence of enhanced mural nodule with internal intermediate signal intensity on T2-weighted image. 
This is a case of malignancy arising from inguinal endometriosis. Also, it is rare endometrial stroma sarcoma is also derived from endometriosis. This patient diagnosis diagnosed as right inguinal endometriosis four years before this image had obtained. After that, right inguinal protrusion has noticed and proved to be endometrial stroma sarcoma from endometriosis by several times of biopsies. Vascular invasion to the right inguinal vessels is characteristic to endometrial stroma sarcoma. Now let's move on to the recent techniques. Diffusion-weighted image is now widely accepted in body regions and used for differentiating from malignancies. This case is a clear cell couch normal arising from endometriotic cyst. Mural nodules are enhanced, and high signal intensity on diffusion weighted image suggests malignancies. Regarding endometriotic cyst, it can be diagnosed by conventional sequences. On diffusion weighted image, a half of the endometriotic cyst shows high signal intensity which makes it difficult to say that diffusion-weighted image provide an additional piece of information. One thing that should be noted is a clot in endometriotic cyst it sometimes shows strong signal intensity on diffusion-weighted image. This should not be mistaken by malignant region. Susceptibility-weighted image may give another appearance of endometriotic cyst. Since SWI is very sensitive to deoxyhemoglobin and iron content, hemorrhagic lesion is demonstrated as strong low signal intensity. In endometriotic cyst, hemosiderin depression is shown on the cyst wall as low signal intensity. The contribution to the endometriotic cyst has not been reported. Uterine peristalsis is a rhythmic contraction of subendometrial myometrium and considered to be related with fertility. In normal uterus, stretching waves of subendometrial myometrium is traveling from cervix to fundus, from cervix to fundus. In patients with endometriosis, no identifiable waves are found. In our study, cervical fundal peristalsis and frequency are significantly suppressed in patients with endometriosis during perioperatory phase. This phenomenon may result in unfavorable effect for spermatic transport. Take home messages are summarized on the slide. MRI represents the optimal imaging modality to diagnose endometriotic cysts and is useful for diagnosis mal malignancy and detailed evaluation of deep pelvic endometriosis. Recent emerging techniques might extend the usefulness of MRI in the evaluation of endometriosis. Thank you for your attention.